What is up, YouTube? This is Ragnar, your favorite Viking here, and I'm bringing you an extra special series all about redstone. Now, if you don't know what redstone is, this is redstone right here. It's a little ore found just below layer 16, right around where diamonds are. However, it is much more common than diamonds. It requires an iron pickaxe or grater to mine, and it also has a unique property, which, when stepped on, it'll light up and produce a light level of one. When redstone is mined, it'll produce approximately three to four different redstone dust drops. Well, technically they're the same dust, but there's three to four of them. And so I just mined this one, and look, we have this magical little dust that dropped. Now there's this dust is redstone, and it's what's used in all different kinds of interactive circuits, if you choose to call them that, in Minecraft, and they're the most interactive aspect of Minecraft that Notch has yet produced. And that's what we're going to focus on, just the very basic elements of redstone in this episode. Now, redstone is used in several different crafting recipes, and the ore can also be smelted. Well, you might ask, why would you ever get a redstone ore? It normally drops dust, right? Well, if you have a silk touch, then there's a small chance you might actually get redstone. However, as you can see, it only produces one redstone, so it's actually far more effective to mine them other, rather than smelt them. So if, if you get one, it might be cooler just to, to break it, or you could use this as a cool interactive floor lighting or something because of how it lights up when you walk on it. The most basic crafting recipe is a simple redstone torch. We'll learn about those later. Redstone can also make compasses. Redstone lamps. Redstone can also make clocks, and as you can see, it'll tell you the time of day by rotating slowly. Even the little image here is rotating by itself as the day goes on. We can see the sun is setting. You can also make detector rails, which are another interesting power source, but are mine carts only. In addition to detector rails, you can also make powered rails. You can also make dispensers, pistons, and a redstone repeater, and a note block. Now, redstone wire can be laid out just like normal wiring, essentially. It can go down, and it creates different shapes to demonstrate which direction it'll be flowing. The purpose of redstone is to transfer current to different blocks. Blocks all have different states. There's only two, the on state and the off state. Now, we see the redstone here in its off state. All of the objects are defaulted to the off state when they first enter the world. That includes everything, even things that aren't necessarily powered or have an interactive effect when powered, but things like doors and other things will actually open and close depending on whether they're on or off. Redstone can go vertically, but only for one block. If you try to do two blocks, it will not work. If you want to do two blocks high, you have to get creative and go around like that. You can even create a spiral staircase, it's a very common technique. Now redstone, when powered, has a range of 15 blocks. And as it gets farther and farther away from its source, it'll slowly decrease in color. We can see how all these little glow block lanterns here are being powered one block away. They're being turned onto their on state versus their off state, and we can even see the range of the redstone's power. Now, if we move on to the different power types, different objects that can actually cause power to go into redstone, we have a button which produces a pulse of redstone, goes on and then off. We have a switch, which turns redstone on indefinitely until the switch is turned off. We have two pressure pads, the wooden pressure pad, which powers redstone when stepped upon, or when an item is thrown upon it. We also have this stone pressure pad, which does not work when an item is thrown upon it, but does when an object, well, when a person or an entity, such as like, a zombie or a pig or any other such creature steps on it. We also have a detector rail which we crafted earlier. It'll transmit power when a minecart is on or passed over it. So when we put a minecart down onto the powered rail we see that it transmits power to all nearby blocks including redstone which then can transmit the current elsewhere. This works for all different minecart types including the furnace minecart as well as the chest mine card. The last type of power source is a redstone torch. The redstone torch has an interesting way of powering things. 
It powers all blocks next to it and above it. It is the only power source which can directly power a block above it. It'll even activate redstone one block above it. In addition to activating redstone above it, it'll also activate all other blocks and turn them onto their on state. So if I put this glowstone block here, we'll see that it also turns on. If we take a look at the typical switch, when we turn it on, it powers all blocks directly adjacent to it, as well as it will not, however, power these blocks, but it can power redstone that is placed directly beneath it. This allows for easy concealment of redstone wiring. We can have another look at how redstone and a power source power different objects. Let's move on to the different types of objects that can be powered by redstone. Fence gates, powered rails, pistons, sticky pistons, glowstone lanterns, dispensers, wooden doors, iron doors, trap doors, and note blocks. Oh, and one more thing, it can also power TNT. Yikes. Alright guys, that'll be it for this episode, and I'll see you next episode, where we will talk about the magic of inverters. Bye! If you enjoyed this episode, why not leave a thumbs up or subscribe? It really helps me out a lot. Also, don't be afraid to let me know what you think down in the comments. See you next time!